Yeah, it's currently more profitable for me to make it. My minister has set all my prices so low because my money's doing so well. Which is pumping up the demand of my people. Because it's making shit more affordable. Which is contributing to my economy. So my economy is maintaining now over 6%. Which is fine. I need the GDP per capita growth. The higher my GDP gets, the more money I get from taxes. Sure, the less good selling things will be, but then I can just buy things with my new money. Now, South, South Korea, some industry goods. For. Three billion dollars. Oh, I'm just staring at Australia has this four hexes of full uranium mine set up, and I am angry. <laughs> I am angry. I want this. But they're just, they're a bigger, more high-tech Malaysia that I, I can't get a foot in the door in to invade. I Not remember... to mention having the repercussions of all the allies. Yeah, well, it's only New Zealand, Canada, the UK. What are they going to do? Sail all the way over here? Maybe. It's Australia themselves that I'm worried about. I know I can't take them. My tech's not that good. And my military's not that big. I managed Malaysia, but anything beyond that right now is not going to happen. Ooh, inflation's still going up a little bit. Wow. Why? Because of the prices going down? Well, the prices have gone back up a little bit. Kind of. They're maintaining. My AI is mostly just balancing whatever I give him with whatever I set my food prices at. Hmm. I think I will lower my food prices even more though. Because, not to raise inflation, but it makes your people happy and it makes your people reproduce more. Don't know why. Because food makes people horny. Apparently. I mean, why do you think we give chocolate to women on Valentine's Day? It's been a known fact it's an aphrodisiac. And that's science. Is that science? Or is that a, uh, a company? Nope, that is legitimate. No, nope, that's legitimate fucking science. You don't believe me? Go look it up. Oh, my, I've been told that actually by a college teacher in uh, when I went to college he, he told us that it was an aphrodisiac and some girl argued with him and he said you don't believe me go eat some chocolate then later tonight I bet you'll be horny a college <laughs> teacher said this to a, a student He said it a lot more exaggerated than I said it, by the way. He was a lot more enthusiastic about saying this. He was, he was like breaking, he was like breaking down laughing in the middle of class about how funny he thought it was. It was kind of funny, honestly. I would be laughing. <laughs> The girl was so offended, you could tell. Okay, yeah, let's stop selling all my uranium now, because now my new plants just are like, Hey, hey, uh, we don't have no stuff.
Yeah, that's what that'll do. Australia, you could be making so much more uranium for the whole world. Why aren't you doing it? Your inflation is about the same as mine. Believe it or not, N Namibia is that the top exporter for uranium. Oh my god, I just had a fucking stream alert go off. I didn't even know it could do that without stream uh, labels open. What did you say about Namibia? Well, they were the top exporter. Now they only have one kilogram left. For uranium. Yeah. That's the top exporter for that day, is what it is. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, I'll buy some from them. I go them? Nah, they're all gone. Well, yeah, they're top exporter because they already sold it. Silly. I know. Woo! Economy's on fire. You know, it's crazy that there's such low demand for so many things in the world, yet the economy's on fire. It's doing great. How can the economy do so well when things are less, like, barely wanted on the market? Wow, your daily demand of rubber has gone down since I last pointed out that it went up. Yeah, as I'm not really using anything right now that is needed. Okay, good. Uranium is back up. Although I'm selling rubber like no tomorrow right now. It's the demand for rubber starting to catch up with my production. That's good. That's good for me. The price is even going up. I think, yeah. Fucking inflation, man. Oh wow, I make a lot of ore now. Jesus Christ. How is the market even still working with how much more I've started making? Like, I'm now the third largest producer of it. I love it. You're the fourth largest producer, but you're like also the fifth largest consumer. Of what oil metal ore oh and I still have room to expand on that believe it or not oh yeah I have plenty of room as well it's it's not I don't know how hot of a resource it's becoming but I haven't made too much I've made a I've expanded my amount considerably which is part of why my inflation is still rising as we speak Yeah, mine's been stagnant at 10.7, so it hasn't gone up any more past that. Uh, I just wish the election would hurry up and get here. There we go, 10.6, alright, alright. Went down. Point one. I'll take what I can get, damn it. <laughs> I'm just kind of watching mine go up in awe. Agriculture's in this weird spot. It's profitable enough to make, but I'm sure if I start selling it, it will stop being sufficient to make it. Because that's how close the prices are. Haha, ha, 10.5 now. Oh, yeah. It's, if it's going down, it's going down. Getting better. Damn, if you, like, held that, though, for a whole year, your GDP per capita would get so much higher. Jeez. That's insane. It's the U.S. U.S.'s GDP per capita has skyrocketed because it's maintaining insane amounts of inflation. I can't. 
cannot get over their fucking population growth. They, they've already passed 400 million now. Incredible. 406 million. Damn. Yeah. We are not growing that fast. If we are going to catch up to them, it's going to be through conquering. My economy's settled in so well right now. My prices are being lowered and everything. I, I feel like I might as well go looking for an ally. But I have all the allies you have and then some at this point. I don't know who I'd go for next necessarily. There's nobody that's vital for me to get. I could go for Hong Kong. I could go for Armenia to try to get in there with Russia. Speaking of which, I completely forgotten about Libya. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll go for Armenia because I have a good amount of money. My economy is growing without me really intervening. I need to build some stuff, but my economy is growing, so I don't, I don't want to. That doesn't seem sufficient to do right now. So instead, let's work on Armenia. They hate my guts, so... Just gonna have to basically dump money on top of them. The minister's not gonna like this. I can see him raising prices because of all this spending. <laughs> I'm gonna unlock agriculture and I'm just gonna see what my minister does with it. I'm gonna see if it breaks the market. Hopefully not. But maybe. So I'm gonna grab carbon dioxide reducers. Is that something you're buying? Yeah. It's gonna lower my pollution and good stuff. Yeah, pollution levels minus 10%, environment rating up 4%. Oh yeah, that'll save you money on environment for sure. Which, as a result, will help you slow the growth of your economy. Which Ooh, 9.8. Yep. Nice. You know what else will help with that? Declaring war. <laughs> After the election. Well, plus, it looks like one of my research finished, so I freed up some cash. The election's this month, huh? Yeah, twenty the uh, twentieth, I believe. And so far, I'm in a good position. I'm at uh, thirty-four percent. I just gotta keep an eye on it. it doesn't drop too damn low. I have to lower taxes back down a little bit to compensate for it. Looks like my agriculture production isn't quite destroying the market, thankfully. So far. Yeah, agriculture is looking, it's profitable again, by little bits. A little I'm bit. producing 633 and more, it's... Yeah, more for you than me. Can't really sell it for that much, though. Like, I only have the markup on the bulk for 2%. <laughs> well, you can raise it. Oh, on the bulk sales. Yeah, most sales. Yeah. But it's still getting me money. I ain't complaining. It looks like I'm holding at 34%, so that's good. down to 9.4 Armenia is already starting to like me I got them from hostile to neutral real quick oh 
that's good. Yeah, I'm going for them because they are the easiest of Russia's allies to befriend right now. And I'm still cold with Russia. I could work on Russia, but, like, they wouldn't be impressed by me. Like, let's see some... Uh, no, I can't do a Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? <laughs> like, no, it does not work. Like, here I go, yeah, comrade, it's good. Yeah, oh, you give me a billion dollars? Yeah, you go fuck yourself. I make more than that in a day. Wow, that was, uh, well, that was a Russian accent, but a Russian making that much in a day? <laughs> it's Russia. <laughs> Everyone's poor. <laughs> I was trying to be Putin. It's like, now if you'll excuse me, I go take shirt off and ride on horse. <laughs> That sounds about right. <laughs> God, I wish Russia in real life would kind of lose Putin and kind of go back the way they were for most of history. Where they were pro-USA. Can you imagine if we and Russia were best of friends? Oh my God. This would just be an indisputable sphere of dominance. Because Europe's just a bunch of pussies now. Oh, what? When it was like the czars ruling in Russia? Yeah, yeah. They were pro-US back then. They were pro-US, but they were anti uh, the UK. Honestly, they would have stayed pro-U.S. if we didn't go pro-U.K., but... You know. Armenia is such a useless ally to get, other than the fact that they can help me get Russia to like me more. Because, like, even if they wanted to reach me, to help me with anything, they can't. They're fucking landlocked. Unless they have the ability to travel through somebody around them, which isn't very likely. Oh boy, I better kill taxes a little bit. My percentage is starting to get dangerously low. like me a little bit more and your elections in like 13 days yeah well you have money you know increased spending on certain things your economy's doing way better in terms of being under control yeah in 14 days i don't want to take any chances i think it's 12 I'm now still at 33 12 it's not going down that fast, but it is getting kind of close to there, so. Yeah. What's my percentage? My election is in September. And I'm still at 39. Yeah, I never really have any problems with my play style when it comes to elections. I've never had to worry about them before. I honestly rarely ever pay attention to them. This is the most I've ever paid attention to them. Oh, I'm now friendly with Armenia already. I'm making them rich. Oh, a new alliance between Somalia and Malawi. Man, Malawi's getting like their own little sphere going on. Now, where the hell is Malawi? There it is. Oh, they're a little country. They're a little landlocked country. And they, they're making a little group of african friends i don't know what they plan on doing with that group because it's just a bunch of little african friends and that's not actually worth very much oh good so my uh entrance into somalia hasn't been threatened by anybody you plan on invading somalia well, just like you did with Malaysia, 
There's my uh, way in. Also, you're gonna befriend Somalia. No, I'm gonna take them through Yemen. Oh, okay. Go to Yemen, stage, and then invade Somalia. Or maybe even closer. Let's see. Just... Eritrea? No. Djibouti is a pretty small country. Djibouti, yeah. They'd be easy to befriend just due to how small they are. In real life, they're like the diplomatic hub of Africa. Everybody is friends with them and everybody has ships based out of them. Every single country has something important placed there. It's really weird. Alright, looks like I'm getting the formal alliance with Armenia. And that'll be another one of Russia's allies under my thumb. Love me, Putin. So are you going to befriend uh, Djibouti? I might. Uh, well, I guess if you do, I'll end up doing the same. Ooh, 32%. It's going to be close. You know, worst comes to worst, you lose your election, you decide to turn your country into a dictatorship, you never have to worry again. <laughs> True. Of course, I think when you do that, like, everyone in the world gains a bunch of justification against you, but... There's my alliance with Armenia popping. Woo! That was, an, that was a semi-easy one. I mean, it, easy, I say. It took tens of billions of dollars. Tens of billions of dollars is pretty easy. Okay, come on, just hold at 32% for a week. That's all I need, just one week. <laughs> well, it's no longer profitable to sell agriculture anymore. So I did break the market. Kind of is for me still. Still a ten dollar markup for me, selling some of it. Northern Mariana Islands, or Island in this case, just falling apart. They're in the red permanently. That happens to a lot of island nations. Makes stomping them out really easy, easy if you want to just expand your naval influence. Wow, my inflation is still going up. That's impressive. I don't know how or why, but it's doing it. Like it has a mind of its own. <laughs> Alright then, time to start deploying the troops. We're going to go to war. We're going to go to war. For a tiny little nation state that we're going to go to war. Someone's getting shot somewhere in this world. I have a combat engineer still deployed. Like, a combat engineer from the World War II scenario. 
I'm just gonna put him out of his misery. There's absolutely no reason to keep this guy deployed. Yeah, he needs to be retired. Yeah. My active personnel has just been going up and up and up. I haven't even expanded my military production. It's just my land production is going up and up and up. It's trying to catch up to the total amount of land that I have and all the facilities. My advisor is not currently happy with my amount of land prowess. It wants more. More, damn you, more. <laughs> By the end of the Cold War scenario with Demo, we were fighting with armies of thousands of units. I know there's definitely plenty of room to grow for me right now. My inflation is just the problem. That's down 8.6. What the hell? I do not have... I don't even have auto build on. Why is it still fucking trying to build shit? What's it trying to build? Oh, and my um, production slots for my army. Like, I have everything set to off, but yet it's still automatically building them. When I don't want it. Um... I'm sure there's some setting that is flipped. When when I was playing with Demma, he never made a mistake that wasn't like solvable. The game's weird, but it at least functions by its own rules. I'm not sure what it could be because I've never done whatever you've done to make your production do that. I just turned it off. What did you turn off? Auto build. So you turn under the fabrication options. Yeah. So those all say off. Yep. Okay. And is your minister locked off from military spending? Yep. And so you're saying that uh, units are being added to your production queue? That's exactly what I'm saying. Are you getting any pop-ups about production? Do you have any cabinet priorities placed? Oh, you know what I think it is? I think it's the arms race. That might be what's doing it. If he's scrapping units and then putting better ones in the queue, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I've never had arms race on and tried not to build anything. If I don't want things built, I just power down the production facilities themselves to save money. Could just try that. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Do you know how to do that quickly? No. <laughs> Sorry, well, I'm not I'm not too about it right now. I mean, like the it's same way you go to build like a land production, for example, there's a put facility offline button in those facility controls, and you could just spam it till you turn them all off. Oh, okay. As many clicks as you have facilities. Zakstan's definitely proving harder to become friends with, but I'm doing it.
I know this is having an effect on Russia because the more friends of Russia I make friends with, the more Russia likes me. And there goes all my troops down there. First wave will be infantry, followed up by tanks and artillery support, if need be. Um, that won't be... No it's a one-tile nation. The only thing you're going to need is infantry and or tanks and or recon. Artillery and anti-air will be useless here. For this, your ships are your artillery. Ooh, their military approval got all the way back up to 66. Shit. We had it so low before. That was fast. I barely turned off the funding like a little while ago. Oh, they got it up fast, yeah. Did the game freeze? Uh, sometimes it does. It probably just did, yeah. Oh, there it goes. I wonder, uh... I wonder who did what to fucking make that happen. Because I'd I only... I auto-deploy, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Like, that means some sort of big movement must have just been made somewhere. Well, there it went again. And he was like, hey, what the fuck's going on? It's like, don't worry, Andy, it's not for you. Not yet. This will be interesting. Okay, inflation down to 7.3. Mine is up to 7.1, and it's still going up. I'm not building anything or doing anything, it's just doing this by itself. My taxes have only been going up thanks to inflation, but my social spending hasn't really moved due to my population not growing crazy fast. If it comes down to it, I'll just lower some of my military production. It's interesting watching it do this. It's also crazy just how fast this has slowed down, I just want to say. Yeah, I know. The Cold War one didn't slow down nearly this quickly. I think right now it has something to do with just all the units that are on the map. Because there's less units overall at the start of earlier scenarios like World War II. They have absolutely nothing deployed. They have one garrison. That's it. One garrison. So if you can overload that with infantry, you know, you're good. One thing that, like, would technically help is having, like, a supply boat to deliver supplies, but... Ideally, you can just overwhelm it instantaneously with naval bombardment and landing units there. I'll wait till they're at least close enough. Stop freezing. 
Welcome to Supreme Ruler Multiplayer. These uh, later, these later scenarios don't seem to scale the best. It really started to slow down after that last war I did. Oh, when you took Malaysia? Yeah, but it's gotten way worse since then. Which is impressive. It took like probably two decades to get this bad when I was playing with Demma. Not six years. <laughs> These later scenarios might just be harder. And it's just multiplayer. If you do this in single player, it will not have this result. Game runs a lot better in single player. Oh yeah, I know. Venezuela and Mongolia made an alliance. That's the most random fucking thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> Landlocked Mongolia and South American Venezuela. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, declare war. Oh, oh okay. Not even a fucking save game. Just in we go. In we go. Happy birthday. Oh, this is like... Here, go ahead and save it. <laughs> That's a little late for that. There. <laughs> go ahead. Oh my god. Oh. So lands the troops. And Maldives is Damn. yours. <laughs> yep. Told you that wouldn't last long. You sent so many troops. That was so excessive. Well, you now own that. You can transform that into a mighty naval base. If you put a barracks there, you can also just store your infantry units there as well. And that way, if they yeah. need to retreat while fighting on Sri Lanka, they can retreat there instead of all the way back to Pakistan. Treaty integrity is down to 73, still a healthy amount. It looks like it's only going to be our wars today. Yeah, it seems that way. That's pretty crazy, especially because, oh, wow. like, right. literally... Hours. Half of our playthrough in terms of time in game, like past, has been today. That's pretty impressive. Bop goes the sea pier. <laughs> oh, you should get rid of that micro consumer goods too. This is the kind of nation where micro things are useful. Leave that shit there. Build me or where are you? Sea port. I think one difference between airfields and air bases is that in air bases you can actually store aircraft and repair them. Oh, an airfield's just landing? I think so. I don't even know how you would get. Well, I guess in this era, planes can travel pretty far, I was going to say. I don't even know how you would get air units all the way out there. Aerial refueling. If, yeah, if you have planes like that. Because they'd have to travel, like... Where's your nearest air base? Airfield. Hey, if the British can send a fucking bomber all the way to Argentina... <laughs> I think I could transfer some planes down to a Well, that was wild. pretty complicated, and that was in real life. But they 
They did it. They though. did it by sending <laughs> ships ahead to carry planes that would refuel the incoming planes in a line. I know. <laughs> Point being, it was done. <laughs>